What's up, you guys? James Strickland here. Welcome to week 15 on my road to 700 pounds on bench press. Glad you can join me, and I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys who have subscribed and that are following me on my journey to 700 pounds. Getting very exciting this week, working up to a top set of three with 585 pounds. This is um, one of my last heavy singles. This is 495, just getting a lift off so that I can uh, make sure that I have the, uh, the exact same bench that I will have for my top set. Uh, so you'll see me take another lift off here for the second set. Uh, 495 moved pretty well, um, still warming up. It's a little bit cold, uh, as you can see. Um, uh, well, actually, I have a jacket over here on the, on the right-hand side hanging, a little sweater that I've been kind of putting on and off during uh, my rest times. Um, this is my next uh, warm-up, he uh, last heavy single at 545. Felt smoother than the 495, so ready to go. Uh, going up to my top set here, which is 585. Um, like I said, it's a little bit chilly. Uh, it's not it's not super cold in Houston, but uh, I like uh, the gym to be a little bit cooler uh, than most people. Uh, you know, a lot of guys can can work out in real hot, uh, humid temperatures. I honestly I overheat. Uh, you know, I'm in here for four hours at a time. Sometimes I I really just I want to be comfortable. Uh, and I lift better that way. So if I could have it, you know, 75 degrees or less in the gym, I'm happy. Uh, but today it's about 50, 50 to uh, 45 or 50 outside, and uh, just a little chilly, a little too cold for me. Uh, it's, I got to keep my joints warm in between my uh, my warm ups and things like that. But let's go ahead and, and look at this top set and see how we how we look. First one, not too bad. Second one there, I actually hit the pin, the safety rack there on the uh, left side, which uh, not too concerned about. Uh, obviously, we are going to move those down. I'm going to show you another angle here. This is a, a front angle. You'll see how it drops on the uh, on the left side. Um, I think it was just it came down a little bit off uh, center, and uh, therefore. The uh, one side was lower than the other. Of course, once it hits my chest, it has a little bit of a, of a whip uh, on the bar, and that caused the, the bar to actually hit the safety pin. Uh, isn't detrimental, but um, I lost a little bit of momentum, and it became a dead press at that point, and this is not the point of this set. So I would rather reset and, and, and take it again, which you'll see in a minute. But if you watch that left side, or actually the right side of your screen, you'll see right here, it hits it just enough to knock it off balance, and I went ahead and told my spotter to grab it, and uh, we'll just reset, take it again. We, we actually dropped those down one notch, uh, which is lower than I would like, but some are actually a little different. Uh, of course, having a spotter here, uh, it's definitely uh, beneficial to have that lift off, uh, but as far as, you know, if I were to lose the grip like I did last week, those safety pins are still set up above my neck, so it's going to hit my chest, but it won't be, uh, it won't be killer <laughs> if, if I lose it for some reason. Uh, I can still roll it back and, and get out from underneath it. But taking the 585 for a second uh, attempt here, this is three reps. Looks a lot better than that first rep on the first set. Smooth, happy with that. And a little bit of a sticking point there, but for a triple, I will take it. So top set of 585 for three, went off without a hitch, feeling good. Moving on to some speed reps with 495 pounds. This is five sets of three. They got faster as they go, as you'll see. Uh, feeling very comfortable uh, with the speed reps. Uh, normally, I'm not real partial to speed reps, um, at least the way they feel. They're great for training, but I hate how I feel after a top set because it's like switching gears. You gotta go from uh, brute strength to speed, and that's a hard transition, that's like a uh, you know, NASCAR having to go to a dragster mode. It's just, it's almost like a different engine that I've got to turn on. Uh, and this is a lot of volume. Uh, if you count the reps from the time that I did my first warm up uh, over 495 all the way to the end of uh, all the bench sets today, that's 28 total reps at 495 pounds or basically 500 pounds and greater. Uh, so I am definitely gassed after my bench sets for the day. Moving on, this is my first set of reverse bands. That's taken about 85 or so, 80, 85 pounds off at the at the chest, and that was 490. I'm sorry, 500 even. 
Moving up to 585 for a double here. And this is just so I could feel a little heavier weight at the top, a little more volume in the triceps, not as much on the chest because it's starting to burn out already. And this is 635 top set with the reverse bands for two. And that's all the bench sets for the day. Got uh, weighted dips here. This is two, actually this is a warm up set. I only got one of my top sets of this on film. Uh, this is 185 plus the Rogue pin, so it's about right about 190. I did about four reps of this just to get the triceps not quite as far down as I would like, but it's a warm up. Like I said, I'm just trying to get warm, get used to the weight, because uh, this is uh, enough to make you black out sometimes. So here's my one and only videoed set. I did two sets of this, 225, and this is six reps each. Try to keep that pin from swinging around there. Sometimes that's inevitable, but ideally you don't want that pin swinging at all. Uh, you want it to go straight up, straight down. And that definitely, you can see the stabilizers all over the place firing. Those are uh, extremely beneficial to a good bench. And uh, starting to just black out here. The weight was really heavy, obviously. Uh, and this is where kind of all that lactic acid and just uh, everything builds up at the end. I felt a little bit of my shoulder on that one. I may have gotten a little bit out of the groove, so nothing, nothing major. Just a couple days after, uh, feeling fine, but uh, went on to hit another set and actually felt a lot better. For some reason, the the camera didn't want to participate, uh, but that is going to be it for this particular day. Even though I'm going to show you this, this is actually done the next day. Um, actually, two days later. I'm sorry. Um, I did had to get out of the gym early, uh, earlier than normal on day one, and not to mention all that volume was just a lot and so I made a judgment call and figured you know what I'd rather hit these sets with nice strict form uh, and just continue this on uh, plus next week's a deload so I have a little bit of time to play with so moving on these are neutral grip lat pull downs and this is uh, four sets uh, with 130 on the uh, the pin there 14 12 10 and 9 reps respectively um, Feeling really good, actually. Uh, you know, I did a little extra warm up just because uh, I've had a couple of days since uh, the bench, and uh, my chest is actually feeling pretty recovered. But I wouldn't want to hit any heavy bench, obviously. That that would be uh, totally against uh, you know my recovery protocol at this soon, anyways. But my back uh, really needs to be worked, and so I'm feeling that here, uh, and it feels great. I'm leaning back slightly so that I can get a little bit more range of motion at the top because that that cable doesn't quite go all the way up. Uh, my reach is a little bit too uh, too much, so I had to kind of compensate a little bit just to get a good stretch in there. But waking up uh, right at 2, 290, 293, depending on uh, you know what what I ate the night before. Um, thinking about uh, probably being exactly that weight for the meat. Um, with the 585 going off without a hitch like it did this week, uh, as fast as it did and as much weight we have for a triple, uh, I'm thinking obviously after the deload we'll probably move into the 600s and that is uh, basically a, uh, a sign that it is time to do uh, some meat planning and I know I've told you guys that we're kind of thinking about a February 9th meet here in Houston and I think at this point we're about 90-95% sure that that's going to be the meet. Uh, as long as everything stays healthy and the numbers go off without a hitch uh, until the meet, uh, that's about um, a little less than eight weeks away. And so I think we're right on par to move up uh, into the mid 600s uh, and then high 600s before the meet, uh, tapering and peaking perfectly for that date. So stay tuned for that. Um, next week we've got uh, like four, 455 uh, for a triple, which is kind of a standard deload weight for me. Uh, just enough to feel the weight, just to kind of uh, get some things in order, get some rest and recovery, any kind of nagging uh, you know, injuries or anything like that that seems to be uh, bothering me is a good time to take care of that, which luckily I don't have a lot of that right now. Uh, moving on, these are uh, dumbbell paused floor flies, 55 pounds, three sets of 15. Uh, this first set didn't quite go uh, as easy as I would have liked. Um, this is I was a little bit cold, a little bit sore in the chest and the pecs uh, from bench. Uh, so this first set I use really just to kind of open things up and get so you can get I can get down a little bit further on each rep. Uh, you'll see the second and third reps, uh, second and third sets, 
excuse me, will look uh, a lot smoother. Uh, and that's okay. You know, I'm not going to go balls to the wall on my quote unquote warm up set uh, if there's no point. Um, I'd rather get warm, get everything open and loose, and then start going at it. Uh, and I, these are accessories, so I definitely put a lot of emphasis on them, but I'm also going to be smart about it. You see these open up uh, quite a bit better, a little bit easier. Yeah, right there, just a little bit an inch further down, uh, and that makes a lot of difference. But, you know, cold muscles aren't going to stretch very easily. Uh, I wouldn't advise you to do that. That's the whole point of warming up. But um, feeling good, like I said, um, you know, I'm getting plenty of rest at night. Uh, between seven to nine hours uh, during the week. Normally, if I can get about 10 hours or so on the weekend, that's fine. Uh, I do have three kids uh, and a wife, and uh, normally they like to get up pretty early, so I've got uh, kids that are old enough that'll kind of take care of themselves in the mornings and let us sleep a little bit, which is nice. Uh, but it's, it's not always easy. Uh, you know, I preach uh, getting sleep, rest, and recovery. You really just gotta take control of that. Uh, you know, if you're having trouble getting that, you've gotta make it a priority. Um, it's, it's got to be as much of a priority, if not more, than getting to the gym. Um, if I can't get the rest, then I'm wasting my time going to the gym. I am under that school of thought and will be till the day I die because I've practiced it and that's what I attribute to my success and my progress being at the rate that it is. Um, it, you, you know, a lot of people can have a lot of different reasons uh, why they can't do certain things. I'm more concerned with the reasons why you should do them. Um, you know, and I know that may sound cliche, but I tell you, um, rest and recovery is not a sissy thing or uh, you know, non-hardcore type of attitude. If you want to be the best of the best, you've got to recover like the best of the best. And I can promise you, the best of the best out there right now are making sure they're getting their rest and recovery, or they're the ones that are getting hurt uh, because they're not allowing their body to recover properly. But uh, that's just my two cents there. So moving on to the last uh, exercise of day one. Technically, it's day two. Uh, split it up. But this is the tricep push downs, holding for about a two second contraction at the bottom. Uh, four sets of 160 on the pin there, uh, eight, seven, six, and five. And decided that I was going to actually increase the weight on the fourth set and went ahead and slapped on 200. I uh, was feeling really good. Now, if this would have been on uh, the true day one, I would have not had the energy. I would have been spent big time. In fact, I was already spent uh, after the weighted dips. Uh, this would have been a lot harder to do. So I'm definitely able to focus on the contraction, mind-muscle connection, uh, and really just working the muscle versus going through the motions, uh, which I would never advise to do anyways, because you really there's a purpose in the gym. But uh, towards the end of the workouts, it's very easy to kind of get into that auto drive uh, mode. And uh, that's the difference between making it work uh, for you and, and count for something versus just kind of going in and putting numbers on the board and getting extra sets in the way uh, that really maybe don't serve a, a real big purpose. So moving on, day two, I did this on Thursday. And so day one, technically was on Monday for bench. Day two that I did, that kind of pseudo that you just saw, was on um, Wednesday actually. And then Thursday is today. This is uh, my first set of rear delt uh, flies. This is three sets of 15 with 130. This is extremely light. Uh, put this at about RPE 7. But this is definitely um, beneficial. It's a, it's a great warm up uh, for the next set that I'm going to be doing. And uh, my rear delts are extremely strong. I can definitely put up the whole, as you guys have seen in previous videos, the whole stack here is about 200 pounds plus a 45 plate stacked on that. So. Uh, I think you guys, if you remember last year about this time, you know, 310 pounds or so on reverse uh, uh, rear or the rear delt, uh, rear uh, delt pec fly machine. Basically, I can turn this around, do flies on it as well. But by the third set, I start feeling a little bit more, feeling the blood uh, getting warm in there, so it's feeling good. Uh, I, I like to wear my elbow sleeves on these just because there is a little bit of pressure on the elbows there. Uh, it's unnecessary. Uh, to have you know, any kind of pain in the elbows that I, that I can prevent. Uh, I do not want any kind of tendonitis creeping in right now. It's the last thing I want to distract me. Um, I don't get any help out of these other than keeping the muscle uh, and the tendons in there, around that area warm. 
Uh, so moving on, I've got the Sir Charles uh, lateral raises with a five second negative. This is two sets of 10, 15 pounders. You notice I got the new uh, animal bag down there, uh, animal gym bag. It's the military green. Been waiting for that one to come out. Finally got it shipped out. Really, really like that color. These um, are really um, putting a lot of uh, emphasis on the front delt, the side delt, and even the rear delt here. You can see that's the same motion that I was doing on the rear delt machine, uh, but it's the compound movement here. Show you a different angle on the second set. My um, left shoulder uh, kind of rooted in there. I wouldn't say it's rotator, but it's kind of in there, maybe a little tendon that's a little bit inflamed in there. It started bothering me about rep six or so on this set. Uh, you can see my facial expressions change probably around rep five, rep six. Um, so I kind of had to alter the angle just a little bit, not to irritate it too much. I think it's just uh, a buildup of everything this week. Uh, just put some ice on it, a little bit of heat massage uh, through the weekend should be fine. Uh, just uh, nothing, nothing to be concerned about, but that's kind of how um, I stay in tune with my body, uh, just in case it is, uh, there you go, you see the facial expression, I can definitely feel it there on the left side. So you can see a little bit of it not getting quite as high, that right there, that motion. Uh, but overall feeling pretty good with that. Moving on to dumbbell bench press. Kept it with the hundreds today. This is three sets of 15 feet up just to work on a little bit of stabilizer and uh, some balancing. Really working on just speed, control. Getting a little more volume in with, uh, with bench, with nothing too crazy, nothing too heavy. There you go, shout out to you guys. <laughs> And this partic particular day too went pretty quick for me. Uh, I was really only in the gym for about 45 minutes. Um, not sure why that was. Uh, I didn't quite feel the fatigue on the sets today uh, like I normally do, uh, which is strange considering I hit a little bit of this uh, tricep movement and, and uh, fly movements yesterday. Uh, so I'm kind of trying to figure that out. Um, not sure why I didn't quite feel the same fatigue that I normally do. Uh, the only thing I can really you know, chalk it up to is that I'm, I'm getting a lot better in shape uh, and I'm a lot stronger and these weights uh, are getting easier, which is a good thing. So uh, moving on to the straight arm, fully extended dumbbell pullovers. This is um, three sets of 15 with 55 pounds. Really working on getting a good stretch back there. Uh, I didn't feel like I was this loose, on, especially on this first set, uh, but looking at the video, um, I'm pretty happy with the range of motion there. Uh, I've got some pretty, pretty big, bulky shoulders, um, and a lot of mobility issues arise typically when you have a lot of bulk in the shoulders. Uh, just the muscle mass itself just doesn't want to move uh, against each other. Uh, but I'm actually pretty happy with that range of motion, considering um, you know the soreness, the pain, the you know, the volume, uh, just the overall fatigue that I have, and the bulk that I have as well. There, uh, I'm actually pretty happy with these, but. These are a great stretch for the uh, under pecs as well, or, you know, or the whole pec really, but uh, really just getting those pecs to, to stretch out a little bit. And uh, moving on to the dumbbell paused tricep extension, pausing for about a half a second or a second or so, just above the floor, constant tension on the tricep, the whole movement. Uh, these really do catch up with you. Uh, five sets of 15, so these are gonna be going on for a while. This is probably the longest set of the day. Uh, spent about probably six minutes total doing this movement over the course of the five sets and uh, 45 pound dumbbells each hand. I typically rest about 60 seconds or so in between each of these sets. I try to get my elbows um, in as close as possible, in close to my body, uh, but at the same time uh, I can only go so far considering um, I will hit my head with those dumbbells. So I try to get uh, a good squeeze uh, in the, uh, the elbows, uh, but obviously 
the focus is on the tricep and I can get that even if the, uh, the weight is not as close to my head as it possibly needs to be. Uh, but being a close grip bench presser or closer grip bench presser, uh, I like to have a lot of my movements, especially this close to a meet, mimic as close as possible uh, the same range of motion, the same movement, uh, if you will, that I'm going to be benching in competition. Uh, I'm not opposed to going wider. I'm not opposed to doing exercises in a different, uh, in a different way to hit the muscle a little bit different. Uh, but this really just kind of helps set the um, the habit, if you will, of continuing uh, the exact motion that you will be doing on competition day. And uh, really, this is my strongest area here, triceps. Uh, so this is why you see so much volume here. It's really because 45 pounds uh, is not enough weight to really hurt me. Um, I could probably do 85 or 90 pounds on these pretty easy, but I would definitely be doing less volume, less reps, less sets, uh, and I would have you know an increased uh, rate uh, or potential for injury. Uh, so 45 pounds is a nice medium ground weight for these, uh, for me to be able to get in uh, some well, let's see, 15 times five. So we've got uh, quite a number of sets here. That's what, 75, 75 reps uh, with this. And um, you know, technically that's 45 each hand, 90 pounds total. They're basically 90 pound skull crushers uh, for 75 reps. And the triceps uh, really don't, they feel them during this set and I feel them during the day, but uh, I'm actually doing this voiceover uh, on Friday, the very next day and my triceps aren't sore at all. Uh, so that just goes to show you that the rest of recovery obviously is in, in, in uh, place properly, but also goes to show that my triceps, uh, and honestly, overall muscle, I'm not, my shoulders are a little bit sore because they're complex, uh, you know, joint. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in there, a lot of nerve endings as well. So I do feel my shoulders more than anything, but tricep wise, chest, pecs, um, I don't feel those uh, as far as like delayed, uh, onset muscle swarm or training like that. So um, that's how I judge how I feel the next day. Uh, not necessarily if I don't feel pain, that doesn't mean I didn't work it out, uh, but it definitely gives me a, a good indicator of my recovery. Uh, so moving on to some throat pulls. This is the last set of the day. And I've got um, 100 pounds on the pin, three sets of 12. I only filmed two of these sets, so um, to show you these two, but these are pretty easy. These are definitely another rolling movement, but um, feeling great. Um, this is bringing us to the end of uh, week 15. Next week's a deload. I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys. I think we're almost up to like 7,000 subscribers, and that's amazing. I really appreciate you guys. Please like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at SwimHack. See you.